So, um, I thought I thought I would um, talk a little bit about my experience so far um, of um, being a digital hobo, and um, John just reminded me that I did a similar session. That was in June, wasn't it? Yeah. So I hadn't quite started then on the British leg of my um, experience. Um, what I talked about there was mostly um, what I did in America. So I'll recap on I'll recap on that for those that we really don't know. Um, but then there are a few things I want to talk about. What I've learned and understood. Um, in the course of the last three months. Um, and then just stuff about, yeah, about the, the accounts of telling me the stories that come out of it and, and how that might, you know, I'd, I'd be interested in, in talking about that. I'm, in, I'm, I'm interested in discussion rather than me delivering you something perfect. But, so interrupt me at any point. Um, to explain the simplest bit, the simplest bit is what I've done, which is that from the 1st of March to the 31st of March, I took a journey from San Francisco to New York City um, using my online social network to help me decide where to go and to put me up on their, well, mostly in America, it's spare rooms. The, 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 all the people I happen to happen to know from on their online social networks didn't put me on their sofas. They um, they have, they give me a wing of their mansion. Um, no, it wasn't quite like that. But um, so basically, I went from the process was that I would write on my blog, I'm here. I want to get to another town. Um, who is there in between who I might stay with or um, go and see? I'm very much trying to focus on um, interesting people, you know, the people in my network, rather than, oh, you should go and, you know, people would say to me, well, you should definitely, if you'll go from New Orleans to um, Washington, D.C., you should definitely go up through the Appalachians because it's beautiful. Yeah. I'm like, well, yeah, that's great, but who is there? Who can I stay with? Um, and so, <clears throat> so that's what I did. In, in very quick succession, I went from San Francisco down to Half Moon Bay, people around in Silicon Valley, shot up to Seattle, went across to Milwaukee, back down to Austin, Texas, Across to Lafayette, Louisiana, then a little hop into New Orleans, um, and then up to Chicago, across to Washington DC, um, and then up into Maine, where I stayed with a friend of mine on a farm for a couple of nights before coming back down to New York City and getting a plane back across. So that's the very simple shape of the trip. That's how it happened. Yeah. When I when I say it now, it seems very simple and straightforward. It was just, you know. Blah, blah. But it it wasn't like that. It kind of unfolded over time as I as I wrote my way through this thing. Um, and then then on the first of April, I landed back in London, kind of going. Well, first of all, I had a good long sleep and a, and a cry, and you know, and the, and lots of tea. Um, but then, um, A, I was thinking, I was kind of thinking, well, what is this experience about? What, what's it showed me? What have I learned? All those kinds of things you want to do. Uh, also, I knew that the, the lease was coming up on my flat. Um, and I was pretty sure that I didn't want to live in London anymore. Or that I didn't want to necessarily live in 
that part of London. So I was thinking more where, where else can I go? Should I live somewhere else in London? Should I live somewhere else in the UK? I don't really know where I want to live. There isn't anywhere where I want to live. Um, of course, it's in London. I didn't have that, but I had that experience recently then. So, um, so then I was talking to somebody, a friend about this, uh, and he pointed out that I'd just done a month travelling across a country that I knew nothing about, just staying with people that I know from online, and why shouldn't I try it here? where I've got a much bigger, richer social network. Um, and it seemed the obvious thing to do. Um, and the more I thought about it, the more it, it made sense as a continuation of the kind of work that I've been doing. So I chose to, to do that, rather than find somewhere else to live. Um, when my tenancy came up on the 29th of June, um, I went off to Glasgow to stay with a guy called Martin Clark, who I knew from Twitter. Um, and what we ended up doing there was making an album in, 20, in 48 hours in his living room. Something that he'd always wanted to do, he was a sound engineer and a musician. Uh, and he'd always had this idea of um, setting up a recording studio in his living room and making an album with random musicians. And so that's what we did. And over the last three months, I've continued to do that. So I've been around the country, I won't go into the details because I can't remember absolutely everywhere in order, but from Glasgow I went to Dundee, then I popped back down to the southeast and hung around in Surrey. I've been to Birmingham Bishop's Castle in Shropshire, um, Bude in Cornwall, uh, blah, 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 Sheffield, Nottingham, Newark. Where else have I been? Don't know. But I'm all over the place. And basically, the, the process is pretty much the same. That when I get to a point where I don't know where I'm going to where I'm going to be. In, the near future, I write on my blog saying, um, here's a little conundrum. Um, I know that I'm gonna, I've got this, I know that I've got this, help me fill in the gaps. Um, and I thought, when I did this presentation at a local gov camp, I thought that probably I'd do it for two or three months, that I would be able to, you know, that by the end of that time, I would be sick of it and everybody would be sick of me. And that hasn't happened yet, still. I'm still enjoying it enormously. Uh, and there still are bunches of people all over the place saying, can I stay with us, can I do this? The difference between what I'm, trying, what I'm doing here and the stuff I did in America, I think is interesting. Well, there's, there's a couple of things. One is that in America I had a very I had a very clear um, idea of where I was going. I needed to get to New York City for the 31st of March because I had a plane ticket back from there to London. Um, and so, no matter what I was doing, I always had in my mind that I wanted to go east. As it happened, I went up and down and all over the place, but, but, but there was that sense of direction. Now, I don't have that sense of direction with this at the moment. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm I'm staying in South Birmingham tonight. Um, I'm probably going back to, Bir to London on tomorrow night or Monday. Then I'm going to Oxfordshire. I'm house sitting for my dad for two hours. After that, I don't know at all. Um, so there's, so there's that, that kind of zip, I'm, I'm zipping around. The other thing, of course, is that in America, I was simply moving. Whereas here, I need to earn a living. I mean, my costs aren't as enormous as they are trying to keep down a flat in London and live the, the, that, that London lifestyle. Uh, 
but I still have costs. Um, I don't, you know, and I'm not interested in. This isn't an experiment in living so frugally that I don't have to spend any money and therefore I don't have to earn anything. So the interesting thing about about this, and the reason I've talked about it as being a digital hobo, is that there's a. I found an interesting distinction between um, a hobo, a tramp, and a bum. Uh, which is a bum doesn't go anywhere. A bum just doesn't just sit, sits there and you know waits until they move on by the police. They don't they don't do anything. They just ask for handouts. They don't work. And they don't go anywhere. They just stay where they are until they get thrown in jail. A tramp does move around, but they they avoid work. Um, whereas a hobo is somebody is an itinerant worker, and they might. Spend some time. Uh, they might spend a long, long period of time in one place. They might spend a long period of time not working. But sooner or later, they will get moving, and they will. And, they will find and so I wanted to play with this idea of what does it mean to be an itinerant knowledge worker? Um, what are the kinds of things that I can do uh, that work elsewhere in the country? Um, that I wasn't able to do before because I was spending all my time running around trying to make my life work economically in one of the most expensive cities in the world. Um, and so, A, I found there are, there, there are a range of things that I can do and that people ask me to do. Um, some of those are, you know, some of those are simple. I mean, there are simple things like my, my mum wanted me to paint the back fence, uh, install a virus software on her PC and upgrade her memory and do all those kinds of things and change the light bulbs and do all those kinds of things. If I did all those things, she was happy for me to stay and she would me as long as, as, long as I like. Um, but I'm also doing things where I'm, I mean, I'm doing a bit of work for Talk About Local where I'm going to who have hyperlocal websites and talking to them about how they can choose them up. I'm doing a bit of coaching. And that's the thing that, that's coming out, and I've just written a blog post about this. The, 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 the thing that I'm finding that I think is interesting is this thing that somebody described to me recently as dynamic emergence. And dynamic emergence is the principle that we are different when we're with different people. So we behave, we, you know, when we meet other people, they draw out of us another aspect of ourselves. Um, and so there are two, th two things that I think are interesting in life for me. One is how it affects me. And that is, you know, often, but a lot of what I'm writing about in here, I'm not necessarily publishing it, but when I'm writing for myself, a lot of it is noticing the different aspects of me that I'm experiencing because I'm with people of a different kind than I'm used to being with. The other side of it is how I become useful to people who are separate by moving through their life, by arriving and helping them to experience some aspect of them that they're not used to experiencing. An example of that for me is, is this guy Martin, who was who had wanted forever to, to make an album in his living room, but didn't have an excuse until I said, well, I'll come and stay. Now I didn't do anything else. I didn't say, I know I didn't know this. Though. I didn't set anything up at all. I just said, I'm, I'm going to come and let's see what happens. And what actually happened was that he, in the week beforehand, he, he rang me and said, what I've been, th I've been thinking about you coming and I wondered whether we could have a kind of creative open house while you were here and see if people would like to come around and do, do things. And I said, yeah, that sounds, that sounds great. And then he rang me back and said, actually, what I've really wanted to do is to make an album in 48 hours in my living room with random musicians from 
the internet. But that, so that's, some, that's not something that I went with the intention to do, but it's something that I drew out of this guy by being there. And arguably, if I hadn't been there, then he still would, he'd still be waiting to do this thing. So I'm interested then in, okay, so that seems to be a useful thing to do, but it's a very interesting value proposition to people to say, I will come to you and give you whatever it is you want to do. Um, however, I've also seen this in... Um, this, is, this is something I'm also aware of in, in, the, in some of the work that I did. So, I did some consulting work a little while ago with some people from our own thing in London called the Title Club, which is a, a... Well, it's a social media cafe. It's a thing for people to come along and talk. Started out as a thing around social media, conversation that goes on for weeks on end. Um, and we, I took some of those people out and we did some consulting work together. And the interesting thing about that was that we applied this principle, although I didn't have a word for it, because we didn't go in with a set methodology. We went in to listen to what people were really saying and talk to them and give them space to talk about what they really wanted to talk about, and then help them decide what the work was that they wanted to do, and then help them do the work that they wanted to do. And so that, again, is interesting for me, you know, the, the, this idea of a different way of working. Now, all of these things, the, 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 um, Nigel came up to me earlier and said, so what's, what's the outcome of the work? I don't do things for an outcome. It's not that I um, it's not that I set out to write a book about travelling without um, you know, travelling through your online social network and so I decided to do a trip across the USA and do that and therefore write a book about it. I may end up writing a book about my experiences, but that's not that wasn't the purpose. And similarly now, I may do all sorts of things. There may be all sorts of products and outputs and stories that get told about the things that I'm doing. But I'm not doing them in order to, to make those things. I'm doing them in order to do them. Um, yeah. So, that's a ramble through what I'm, what I'm thinking. The only, other, the only other thing I've got noted down here is, that, is, is an example of the, that kind of thing that comes out, the stories that you can tell, out of this massive stuff. Which is something, the thing that's become interesting to me about house rules, about how the, the kind of rules that we have in our homes that we don't necessarily know about until somebody com comes and starts breaking or bending them, or just pushing very gently out. Um, and I just throw that out as an observation, really. Um, I, I won't go into detail about some of the things that... <laughs> that, that I mean, I, I think it's interesting that I, I, I appear to be very skilled at picking up unspoken rules and not pushing too hard against them, not breaking them. But I had an experience where, no, I'm not going to say this because I'm going to go. Stop it. So. <laughs> I did. Sorry? Thank you. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, uh, anyway, I've, 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 I've bumbled and burbled on That's enough. Can, 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 can I make a comment? Yeah, sure. One well, of the interesting things is uh, listening to your description of yourself as an itinerant worker. Mm -hmm. And in the sense the skills that you found in yourself about adapting to society. It's just reminded me of a book that I read a long time ago in the 70s called The Social Construction of Reality. Okay. Yeah. Which is about human beings' the innate ability when they join a group to actually adopt the norms of the group that exist. That's part of what we do as human beings. Mm -hmm. And I suppose
suppose in a sense your story is about how the internet and blogging in this form and travelling in this form has given you a fluidity in your life which most of us have, mm. if you like, ironed out by taking up a steady job, fixing a relationship with somebody. So if we've all got this capacity of like a golf ball, I, I, I think you should say to students, in a sense we've got golf ball-like personalities. And when you meet people, you unconsciously adjust them so that the mm -hmm. facets match each other. So essentially you reinforce each other. Yeah. Um, and it seems to me that that's what you've found is this niche now in the new technology, in the age of new technology, of fluidity. So you can, and you can maintain that sort of fluid aspect to your character and your life. And I suppose in a sense it's whether we're all going to be all going to become itinerant or not. Well this is a mixture. <coughs> this is one of the things that people ask me, I particularly get it asked it by people who don't know me well already and are uh, I mean, I first was asked by the wife of a guy who was putting me up, um, and she'd never met or heard me before, was not really internet savvy either. And, and she said, what happens if everybody wants to live like this? And, and I'm like, well, I really don't. I think, it's, I think we're a long way from that, first of all. And secondly, then we would have a very different society. Because all the buildings around us would not be owned by any one person in particular. We'd all be moving through spaces and we would develop a whole bunch of social norms to deal with that. Um, but we're, we are a very long way from that. And I don't think, I'm, I certainly don't recommend it as a, you know, I'm not, I'm not here to sell it as a way of life. Because you're able to write about it and 
formats that you can you can do things that previously you could only do um, you could only do for a small audience on a global scale. Now, um, I think that then becomes interesting if you actually go, if you start travelling and physically go to these places and do these things. That's kind of that's kind of where I've been at the point. Um, you asked something about what kind of skills? Yeah, what is the Good question. What am I, what am I saying? I, what, what I appear to be saying is dynamic emergence. Is the is um, so and, and, the, and the way that this gets packaged in something that people can recognise because you know when we try and sell things, it always helps if people know how to buy the thing. Um, so. The thing it gets wrapped up as is, is a bit like coaching. Mm -hmm. It's most like that. Because I will spend a day with somebody, talking to them, being with them, listening <coughs> to what they're doing, helping them think through what it is they want to do next, um, sharing my experience of having done that and what, what it inspires in me about doing those kinds of things in a networked online world. So it's kind of, it's closest to that, but it's not coaching in the way in the same way. A lot of coaching is is like is for a specific outcome with a specific process. So it's it's most it, it's closer to if you want to run in the 200 meters in the Olympics, you need to do this, this, this and this. And, and then if you do all of those things, I can promise you that you will be able to do this thing. I don't make such a promise. I simply say that in my experience, other people have been able to do things that they weren't able to do before. It's interesting that you touched on this experience of sharing. We've got three twin towns. And when our French come here and we go there, when the Italians come here and we go there, you finish at the back is a young, young, low chef in our Welsh town. Mm -hmm. You stay with those people. Mm -hmm. And the language, when we go to France or Italy, means the rules are even more difficult to understand. So if you've done the American crossing and you've done England or wherever you've been, yeah. stuff, you know, language is so important because mm -hmm. when we do the exchanges, it's about sharing somebody's home. It's largely about community sharing cultural heritage. So by and large when you match to a French family, you've been that they've got similar got similar interests, similar profile. So in lots of ways what you're doing is a journey. You're surprised how many people since these twinnings have been going 20 odd years, but the idea is to share and understand mm -hmm. communities. A lot of what you've been saying is, is doing is a bites a view down as you do in one or two day placement. Actually twinning is in market towns, that sharing mm -hmm. And the journey, but the language, you know, the house rules and things like that are even more difficult to, yeah. to, to set the boundaries because of that. Yeah. yeah. But there's probably a bit more forgiveness too. There's, there's, I think, I think if, if you're already. Yeah, anyway. No Sorry, you can say it. Um, I, I just got a couple of questions really, they're fairly simple. Um, the first one is what inspired you to do this in the first place? Um, okay, that's not a simple question. Um, <laughs> the, the, the second one is an online relationship and an offline relationship is very different. Do the people that you're actually staying with have reservations about you staying with them? Or do they just open their doors and say, come on in? Um, I've only stayed with people who have welcomed me. <laughs> um, so I don't know. I don't know how many people are going, that would date some never going to happen. Yeah, what was that all about? Yeah. Um, so, um, Give what inspired me? I see this as a continuation of a, of a whole, of a slow unticking of boxes in my life. So, 10 years ago, I had a full time job with a pension 
um, uh, uh, owned a, a house, was married, blah, blah, blah. All of those boxes have been unticked slowly but surely over the last 10 years. Um, and so I see this period where, where I, um, where, you know, this summer when I let go of the idea of me having a permanent home has been just another part of that. It's just another, oh, okay, it's, it's something that's been, I say to people often, it's something that's been trying to happen in my life for a long time. You know, I've been resisting it. Because you would, wouldn't you? Mm. You go, well, surely not that. Surely, <laughs> surely I'm not to give up my home. That's got to be the basic thing, isn't it? And it turns out that no, it's not for me. Um, uh, actually, giving up having a, a permanent home has opened up all sorts of things that, that weren't able. Um, in terms of online and offline relationships, I think that's a very, very interesting question. And that's, that's what I spend a lot of my time thinking and talking about, is, um, is there a difference? Um, uh, and I think that with the, 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 the current state of the art in social technologies, we do we actually know we know people much better than we than we think we do. Mm -hmm. um, there weren't any surprises when I travelled across the states. I was largely meeting people that I had not met before, but had met online, and there weren't any surprises. Now that's partly about the maturity of the technology and the, the way that we interact, because with Facebook now, you have to be. I think in the past we've had, with you know, that it, it's been more difficult because people could construct an online personality um, that just wasn't true. There was there was their prediction of who they wanted to be. I don't think you have quite that level of control anymore. Mm. You can, I mean, or if you try to create an online personality, it can easily undermined by other people. So, we, which, which is, a, you know, basically we have far more triangulation points on people we don't, we haven't met before through those things. So, yeah, what that all comes down to is, I pretty much know these people as well. I know people, the people in, uh, well, let's think, um, somebody in New Orleans, as well as I know somebody in Newcastle. Um, I did go and stay with people that I didn't know when I was in the States, but they were friends of friends. So my, my second stop, in fact, was because, yeah, the reason, the reason I went from San Francisco to Austin, Texas, via Seattle and Milwaukee, was because I had no other options <laughs> provided to me. I blogged in San Francisco saying I want to get to Austin, Texas by the middle of next week um, and I will take I will go whichever way makes sense from the information that arrives in my mailbox tomorrow morning. And the two things that came through were a woman in Milwaukee saying I don't know, you probably want to come after Austin because of the, it's over to the east of Austin North, um, but you're welcome here anytime. And uh, an ex girlfriend of mine uh, who said, um, I know three people in the States that I trust you with, and one of them lives in Seattle. You might get in touch with them. They'd love to have you. So that was it. Uh, yeah. So basically, what that also helped me decide. To, uh, to get a rail pass because I love travelling by train anyway and the way that I then did the rest of the trip was by rail and I got the train from San Jose to Seattle um, and stayed with these people 
Basically, they turned up at midnight and picked me up from the train station in Seattle uh, and took me back to their house and looked after me and let me use their sauna in the morning. <laughs> took me out for pancakes. Can I ask you another question? So, mm-hmm. first of all, do you think, in a sense, this is a spiritual journey? Absolutely. The reason why I said it is because it's a book called No Destination that my man called Satish Kumar. Ah, uh, yes. He seems to have done something similar. But it does seem to me, because his tradition um, is linked to the Buddhist tradition, it's about the seeking non attachment. Mm. And if you're around ticking boxes, it sounds mm. like mm. the process yes. of detachment. Sure, sure. And, um, uh, yes, because it's about, it, it is about trusting that. Trusting the process of life, really. Um, and that's been noticed twice while I've, while I've been travelling. Once was in a Lutheran church in Milwaukee, um, <clears throat> where they completely got this. They were just like, oh, yeah, you, you, know, if you, um, you trust in God, you give, you, you've given yourself to Him, and you are. Not quite how I framed it myself, but if, if that's that kind of, if that helps them understand it, then, and it certainly helps me understand it in some new way. Yeah. And I and I also had a great thing um, where when I arrived in Dundee, I was I sat down with um, the woman who took me in was an old school friend of mine who I barely seen. Um, and I said, so what do you understand about what I'm doing? And she said, well, it seems to me it's all about grace and trust. I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah, all right. <laughs> but that's, that's, I, I, um, that's not easy stuff to write about and talk about. It's not, I mean, it, it's a, It's much easier to talk about it as a crazy social media adventure <laughs> than as a spiritual journey. I suspect the votes in your journey, which are a bit like the things that have been illustrated in programs, a series of TV programs called Silent, which is all about trying to give people the experience of a monastery life. Mm-hmm. And the moment of uh, not talking, not talking to each other, not talking or listening to themselves or talking to themselves, and having to maintain that discipline essentially drove each one of them. Some came out convinced they'd heard Jesus. And that's so all the to convince her. I think one, one of the, the interesting thing for me is finding is finding where my mental health is best. Um, and actually I find that I've, I've found that the re, the the best state for me is when I'm meeting. Is I find my I can find my equilibrium easiest when I'm in motion rather than I don't anymore feel the need to have a space. I mean, my mum said to me, I need to come back here to my house and be in my house. And that's when I've got my four walls around me, that's when I can feel safe and get, get equilibrium. You seem to carry it around with you. I think, um, I think people find journeys compelling stories. Anyway, mm-hmm. don't, when you think of all the novels and Films and TV programs that are based around journeys, and I think people people are compounded by that story. I mean, I even found, like in my early days on Twitter, people started to become obsessed with the fact that I travel by train a lot. Mm-hmm. And, and and as I said to me earlier on, most of my tweets about being on trains have been frustrated and bored by being on a train. Yeah. But some people just think, see, the fact, the fact that somebody is travelling is interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. I'm not quite sure about that. And you know, I think you can construct stories out of journeys. When I'm doing this, can't get on line week thing next month when I'm travelling the country in rural communities. And I shamelessly rip off other people's ideas, so I partly based that on what you're doing, Lloyd, but I also partly based it on what Christian Payne documentary did yeah. when he uh, went from Land's End to John O'Groats. Yeah. Um, and I found that a really compelling story, not least of which because you know he really played on his social networks, and including when he got stuck in the snow in Scotland 
wandering into a pub and finding out that people via Twitter have been putting money behind the bar for it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. And you know, part of the reason I do, I, I do it is to let other people, to give other people the opportunity to do it too. Mm. Because I know that an awful lot of the things that I've done have, have been because I saw somebody else online doing it or writing about it or thinking about it. Yeah. And I was going, for a long time I would sit there going, why don't I get to, why don't I get to do this thing? Why don't I get, to, why is everybody else on the phone, not me? And then I kind of thought, well, um, um, maybe because you don't want to do this. Maybe you could try. Uh, and, and funnily enough, when I started trying, they happened. I think, I think that there are needs that. You need, mm. you need other people to show you what's possible. And that's why I was you know, sort of thinking about how um, something like this can... Because cause one of the things that social media community isn't always great at, I think there's always that yes. to improve it, is um, sharing with our fellow people. Mm. And it is this magical thing of, you know, well, well I trust you on Twitter and I go off and people can't imagine what the hell mm. it is. It's probably easier to um, say I trust in God than that. But, uh, but it's, you know, there is something very, very helpful to communicate to people mm. who are um, struggling at the moment, you know, struggling generally, but struggling at the moment particularly, um, who are basically going to be without to the point you made about your mum, do you not miss what she said about having the four walls and do you not miss having a haven or somewhere to, to, to go back to, you don't miss that or? No, I, I genuinely feel that feeling of being at home, I, I, I felt it very strongly the other day on Nottingham railway station, I just, I can't explain it except it was, I know there's nothing particular about Nottingham, I just, had been, uh, uh, I'd been up in Nottinghamshire for a few days, and I knew I was getting on the move again uh, properly. You know, I'd been dotting around, but I knew I'd got, I'd got a couple of hours or longer because I was going right down to the South Coast. Mm. Um, and yeah, I could, uh, I could breathe again and, uh, and start writing again. Because there's, there's another thing that, in all this about, you know, when um, I can often be too busy doing being me and doing this stuff to write or create something or record it for somebody else. Um, you know, that's that's true of. I know that was that was true before I started. It. I think, I think we all have that feeling to varying degrees. I mean, I, as a kid, my dad had a job in which he travelled around the country, and the school holidays I used to go with him. Mm -hmm. And I think I've always had this desire to travel, even though it you know, might not be very foreign, it might be on a train. Mm -hmm. um, and in periods of my life, I've had jobs where I've had to stay in one place all the time. Mm -hmm. I really hate it. Mm -hmm. So I've decided now I always want to do some sort of work where I travel around. Yeah. I don't like staying in one, even though I, you know, I don't go as far as giving up my home, but I do like travelling around. Mm -hmm. Thank you.
virtual sharing is one thing. Mm -hmm. It's nice that we walk to the town and we have a many things, if I want anything doing that. In other words, you've got a group of people, but then you're doing one of the projects. Yeah. Like you've got a virtual link, it's mm -hmm. nice to have the people in the community, no matter what it is. Two beer festivals, two publicans I go to. So no matter what it is, that place of home is not just the building. No, it's the people, and, and you're quite right. The, you know, the, the people that are in the community are mostly accessible through email. Twitter, Facebook, and so on. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah.